So, um, I can see that, yes, it is possible to understand relationship. Um, now, if I understand it, but my family members, especially my spouse, doesn't understand, does, has not been through this, then how to go about it? Yeah, what we are saying is that ultimately, <coughs> yes, both <coughs> have to understand it. Me, my family, you know, then later on we'll see even every member of the community has to understand relationship, accept relationship, have these feelings in relationship and ensures this expression of this feeling in mutual relationship. So that is what is ultimately desirable. But then how do we begin? <clears throat> right. So it is essential to begin from one person at least, one side at least. You know. So in the family, if I have come to know something about this, you know, that family, what is important is relationship, and in relationship, what is important is the feeling. Right? And these feelings are, you know, definite, and I can understand these feelings. And when I understand these feelings, I have this feeling in me. And when I have this feeling in me, you know, I am in a state of harmony, the happiness within. And when I share this feeling with others, you know, it is naturally acceptable to the other, and therefore. <clears throat> giving happiness to the other as well. So when I understand this, then I have to begin. Right? I have to begin and that's how things will proceed. So what we are saying is that it is essential to begin from one side at least. An unconditional acceptance of relationship from my side will at least ensure happiness in myself Right? This is one thing which is guaranteed. It will further provide a base for relationship. Right? Mm. So when I express this feeling to other, he will have natural acceptance for it and therefore it will lead to his happiness as well. Right? So this is important that I have to begin this process because it is ensuring happiness for myself right? and it is going to, you know, <coughs> give happiness to the other as well. Right? So if I have understood this, I begin. Mm. Now the problem is that when I am expressing this feeling to the other, he will be, you know, it is naturally acceptable to him, so it will you know, leading to a state of happiness within him, but he may not be able to reciprocate. So that is the question, basically. Mm, yes. That if I am doing it and the other is not reciprocating, then what do I do? Mm. Right. If you look at the first part, I have to do this because it leads to my state of happiness. Right. That is the basic reason. Then, if I have this feeling in me and I am expressing this feeling the, to the other, it will also give happiness to the other. So, at one level, that acceptance is there in the other for your feeling. Right? So, that creates the base for relationship. So, that acceptance will be there even though he may not be able to reciprocate because he does not have that feeling. So if he does not have that feeling in himself or herself, he or she will not be able to reciprocate. But he will certainly have an acceptance for this feeling which we have expressed to the other person. That is important. Mm. Right. So this will create a space in the other. This will create a space in the other. And what at one level, there will be an acceptance for you. Now, when there is an acceptance for you, right, in relationship, then you have the space to work. Right. Then mm -hmm. you can work for his understanding of relationship, 
is acceptance of relationship, this feeling of relationship, right? So that is the time when you can work with him or her, right? Mm. So what we are saying is that <clears throat> fulfillment from my side will create a space in him or her to accept relationship on the basis of feeling of gratitude. So when I'm fulfilling this relationship with the other, <clears throat> he will have a feeling of gratitude. He may not express it, but he will have this you know, feeling. And with that feeling of gratitude, you will have that acceptance for relationship. Right? And once we have this acceptance for relationship, we can have proper sharing and dialogue. And this will help in the process of, you know, this dialogue leading to understanding. And can we go to the next slide? Rajalji, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, the next slide is this one. Acha, acha. Now there is something not visible here. Yeah, but anyway, what I'm saying is that if we have that acceptance and we can have a dialogue with the other then that will generate that understanding for relationship, acceptance for relationship, and these feelings in relationship. And then he will be able to reciprocate. So that is how we can go about it. So, but I have to begin. <clears throat> I have to begin the process if I have understood relationship. If I have the acceptance for relationship, if I have this feeling of relationship <clears throat> with the other, then I begin with it. This, on the one hand, ensure happiness for me, myself, and on the other hand, it will create, you know, an acceptance in the other for the relationship. So you are saying that um, I can have happiness for myself even if the other is not really reciprocating. Yes. In fact, see, somewhere it is to begin, you know. I cannot give happiness to the other I am unless I am in a state of harmony and happiness within. Mm. Right? Mm. This is the problem today, that we are trying to make others happy and we are ourselves unhappy. <laughs> so what we give ultimately is unhappiness to the other. Mm. So this mother wants to take care of the child, but he gets irritated. And she starts shouting at the child or beating the child. Right. So deep down, you want to make the child happy. But what you are ending up doing is making it unhappy. Because you are not comfortable within. Mm. <coughs> and if you are not <coughs> comfortable within, how can you make others comfortable outside? And this is our problem. The child, you know, starts thinking that the mother is in opposition, which she is not. But she doesn't have that, you know, feeling either, or she does not have that, you know, um, process by which she can express that feeling. So the problem is either at the level of feeling or at the level of expression of it. So unless the mother is comfortable within, she cannot take care of that child. Even though she has this feeling of affection, she does not have that competence to express that feeling of affection because there are other problems you know, in the self. <coughs> mm. So she starts with the feeling of affection and halfway it gets converted into a feeling of opposition. She starts with the feeling of trust, halfway it gets into mistrust. Mm. So how long do I continue from my side and how long do you think it should take for the other person to reciprocate? This is what I'm saying, that <clears throat> from your side, if you are starting, then the moment you have the right feeling, you get happiness out of it. You are in a state of harmony and happiness. And that you have to do anyway, <clears throat> because you want to be happy. Mm. 
So if I see it this way, then the issue of time is not very, very important as we have made it. So I have no option but to do this at this moment, the next moment, and every moment. Right? Mm. If I have the understanding and I have this feeling born out of this understanding, then I have this continuity of this feeling and I am in a state of harmony and happiness. Right? Now it does not matter how much time it takes for the other. <coughs> right. <coughs> it may take time because by the time the other person gets, you know, uh, assured that, yes, you mean relationship, you know, you are genuine. Till then, he does not open up the dialogue even. He's not even willing to listen to it. So that will depend upon how much misbehavior you have done in the past or somebody else has done in the past with that person. Right. But what I'm saying is that if your feeling is born out of your understanding, it will have the continuity. You will be in a state of harmony and happiness. And you will work with that feeling with the other. On the other hand, if it is not based on right understanding, and if it is based on the expectation that if I do this, then the other person will reciprocate, then you have so much of, you know, kind of uh, seriousness about the time, you know, how much time the other person will take. <laughs> because you are waiting for the, re you know, resp the response from the other. Yes. You are waiting for the reciprocation. That will decide whether you have to continue with the feeling or not. <laughs> what we are saying is that this understanding has to lead to this feeling. In that case, I have that feeling even when I am not interacting with anybody. I must have that feeling. Mm. When I'm having interacting with this somebody, I must have this feeling. Right. And I must continue to have that feeling whether the other person is reciprocating or not reciprocating. Because that is what is natural for me. And that is what will lead to a state of happiness within. So that example we were taking, you know, that you are taking you're thinking of taking revenge from someone for two hours. And at the end of that two hours, you drop the idea. <laughs> what happened to you? The other person does not even know about it. But what happened to you? Whether you were in a state of happiness or unhappiness within? Unhappiness. Unhappiness. So do I want to suffer that because the other person is not reciprocating to the right feelings? No. No. So this is significant that my feeling is dependent on my right understanding or it is dependent on the happening from outside. If it is out of my right understanding, then I will have this feeling for all time and be in harmony and happiness. If it is born out of this you know, response from outside, then time becomes very important for me. Then I will keep waiting whether the other person is responding or not responding. And if it is not responding, you know, then you might get violent. Mm. Because at the base that feeling is not there. I mean, oh. all these issues slowly we'll be able to, you know, kind of see how they are working. Because uh, the way it is today is that all the time you are expecting these feelings from others. Right? And you are not serious about ensuring this feeling in yourself. So, the result is quite bad anyway. You know, which we have been mentioning that I am looking for the feeling of respect from you and you are looking for feeling of respect from me. And I'm not working on having this feeling of respect in myself. Right? You are not working on having this feeling in yourself. 
As a result, when I am looking for respect, I am not getting it from you. When you are looking for respect, I, you are not getting from me, right? So the situation today is that everybody is, you know, begging for respect, and nobody has this, you know, this feeling of respect in their bowel, right? Mm. So this is where we are. So is living separately a possibility? So that you don't have to think about this kind of a relationship where it is so difficult to try to manage together. So, like for instance, you know, when <coughs> as students we were living in the hostel, we didn't have to worry about family. So we were on our own, and uh, you know, so many young people now are still not interested in uh, sort of managing with the older generation. So, can being or living independently, separately, can that be a solution? Yeah, this is the notion of freedom today, you know. This is the notion of freedom today, and we have tried this out in the present day society. Right? And certainly it is not working. It certainly it is not working, because the kind of situation that we have in the society today, Right? People are facing extreme isolation, alienation, and then this leads to frustration, depression, and even suicide. So increasing cases of divorce and all that is there. And with that, we can see whether it has led to a state of happiness or unhappiness. So this will lead to unhappiness because of these two reasons which we have mentioned here. One is relationship is something which is natural. And hence it is necessary for my happiness and happiness of the other. So this is one simple reason why this isolation will not work. Isolation is not something natural. Right? Being independent, right? Mm. Where you are saying that we are not interdependent this will not work because we are not interdependent we are not independent in that sense that we are not interdependent right so that swatantrata means being in a state of harmony with him and as a result of that being in the harmony with the whole world all around with the whole existence <clears throat> That is the state of Swatantrata. <clears throat> Thinking that Swatantrata would mean that I do whatever I feel like and I don't bother for the other. <clears throat> it does not work because it's not the way the nature is. That is not the way the existence is. The existence, the nature is in relationship, in harmony, in coexistence. And that is what, you know, is embedded in us also. That is what we have natural acceptance for. So we have to understand this, we have to you know, accept this, we have to have that feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence and be with it. That can be the only source of happiness for us. There is no way out. So this is one reason. Mm. The second is that majority of our functions, you know, in the family, in the society, are in mutual dependence. And hence, isolation creates all kinds of problems in the family and society that we can see. For example, if you do not have three generations in the family living together, right, we have all this problem. You have to have crest for the child and you have to have old age home for the old people. Mm. <clears throat> and you have increasing number of them now. So when the three generations were there, the grandfather were really taking care of the children, you know, they had enough time to pay attention to the children, right? So the children got that attention, that respect, right? Today the grandparents are not there. The children are in a very bad shape because both husband and wife are going to work. There is nobody to look after them. Right? So there will be an ayah or they will be left in that quest for taking care. 
<coughs> where that feeling is not there now they are neglected and so much that they become the attention seeker and throughout their life they are seeking for attention yes True. and that seeking for attention creates so much a problem you know mm -hmm. so much a problem you know you feel that if boss is calling me he will shout at you now why is he shouting at you because he wants to get attention somewhere he found that you are not paying attention to him so he will call you and shout <clears throat> so this is all related <clears throat> all related in fact uh, <clears throat> i was mentioning this that there is some book written you know on uh, this hitler napoleon and more person three people you know who have been the uh, dictators you know and uh, they have killed so many people <clears throat> So when a psychoanalysis of these people have been done, and their parents, particularly their father, you know, is done, it is found that all these three of them, you know, their fathers were very dictators, you know, and they were really torturing these young boys. Right now, when they were tortured in their childhood, they have kind of picked up this sanskar, and now they can kill even sixty lakhs people in their lifetime. So, <clears throat> this living in isolation or living in opposition, you know, is not going to work. But we can always try. <laughs> I mean, if we look at our own experience, we we'll see it does not work. <clears throat> um in the relationship uh, part we have mentioned nine feelings so there are other feelings that are not mentioned here like truth honesty working hard sincerity generosity so so many other uh, uh feelings or uh, you know things that are of value to us so how where do we place these or how are these related to these nine feelings <clears throat> see what we have been saying uh, right from the beginning you know uh, <clears throat> is that what is important you know when we talk about relationship is realization and understanding of relationship harmony and coexistence so this understanding is required this realization is required that relationship is there in nature in existence not that we have to create it so this relationship this harmony this coexistence is what we are calling as truth right so the first important thing is to realize this truth understand this truth that relationship harmony and coexistence is there this is the way the nature is this is the way the existence is second is acceptance of this relationship harmony and coexistence and that is what is called as feeling of love and once we are able to see this relationship harmony and coexistence then we have this commitment for fulfillment of relationship relationship harmony and coexistence and that is what we are calling as compassion so this is important you know the central thing that i should be able to understand that relationship is there harmony is there coexistence is there so i must know the truth then i must have the acceptance for this relationship harmony and coexistence so i must have this feeling of love for everyone right? every unit in nature and when i see that i am related to the other i have the commitment to fulfill that relationship that harmony that coexistence that is what we are calling as compassion so this truth love and compassion is something which is basic which is fundamental 
right? This we have to ensure. And if you look around in all the you know these traditions um, which have been talking about values, right? they are basically talking about this. Right? They are basically talking about it. This. What we are also saying is that it is the feeling of relationship which is naturally acceptable for every human being, right? And not the feeling of opposition. This feeling of relationship we want to have for one, for many, and ultimately for everyone. So when we have this feeling of relationship for everyone, it is called love. And it is this feeling of love which is based on understanding of truth, which is the basic feeling, you know, which is the complete value, you know, as we are calling it. We will see this detail as we go on. That this love is the complete value. That is where we want to reach ultimately, having this understanding of relationship and having this feeling of relationship for everyone. So we want to be there. Right. Once this feeling of love is there, then you know, it can be expressed in different ways at different levels. Can we move to the next slide, Rajinji? <clears throat> so, this is what we are, you know, uh, saying that this is the most important value, this feeling of love. And we must take care of this. Once this is in place, other feelings can be seen as expression of this feeling of love at different levels. For example, this affection, this feeling of affection, which is one of the list in one of in the list of nine feelings, is an expression of this feeling of love at the level of one or many. When it is for all, it is love. When it is for one or for many, it is called affection. Further, we can see that this care is when this affection is expressed in terms of responsibility of taking care of the body. So when the mother is take, you know, taking the responsibility, you know, feeling related to the child and is taking care of, is taking the responsibility of taking care of the body of the child. That is what is called as the feeling of care. So all these feelings you can see, the feeling of affection and the feeling of care and guidance, these are the expression of this feeling of love right, in a particular individual, in case of a particular individual. So that way, we can see that all these nine feelings that we are talking about is a specific expression of this feeling of love. And this we will do when we are discussing about the other feelings and ultimately the feeling of love. We will see that you know this express this love is basically the basic feeling you know, and is the complete value and all other feelings can be seen as an expression of this at different levels. Now if you look at this feeling of love and keep that as the base, then you can see that this is this feeling of love, you know, in a sense is common to most of the traditional systems. So if you look at, you know, the traditional societies which have been working on values right, in India in or many of the Asiatic countries, right, they are talking about this feeling of love, right, as the basic thing, you know, as the highest value. So if you look at Buddhism, if you look at Jainism, if you look at Christianity, all this are talking about this feeling of love right? as the basic or the highest feeling. Some systems have placed it as non-violence. That is not having the feeling of hatred for anyone. So this is just putting the other way. 
instead of saying having feeling of relationship for everyone you are saying you should not have feeling of hatred for anyone mm. and this using love or non violence also depends upon the condition at that time you know so when you are in a normal situation you will say love right when you are in a situation where everybody is killing everybody else you would say okay at least have non violence then we will come to love okay. <laughs> but that is fine we will use the as synonymous thing so if you look at this feeling of love and or no, feeling of non violence this has been there you know which is common to most of this you know um, traditional systems that we have you know uh whether in india or in you know in other china or in other parts of the world but when you look at the detailed expression of this right then they have talked about different feelings right they have talked about different you know i mean expression of this feeling of love so if you look at for example this truth right right gender city honesty and things like that those three things that we talked about you know understanding of relationship harmony and coexistence that is truth acceptance of this relationship harmony and coexistence that is love and commitment for the fulfillment of this relationship that is called compassion right that will include all these truth honesty hard work sincerity generosity and so on right so this is another set of expression of that understanding of relationship that is truth acceptance of relationship and commitment for fulfillment of relationship mm. now this constitutional value you know this is one important thing that we should take this as an example you know and discuss you can see <coughs> three very you know kind of prominent values in constitution is freedom fraternity and equality so let us try to understand what these values are you know so if you look at this freedom that is swatantrata is being self organized which in a sense would mean that i understand what is naturally acceptable to me and i am being with that so that i am in harmony and happiness within that is the meaning of swatantrata so i am able to understand what is naturally acceptable to me and what is naturally acceptable to me is relationship harmony and coexistence and then i am being with that you know feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence if that is the case right and i am able to fulfill that relationship you know harmony and coexistence then i am in a state of harmony within and state of happiness within this is the meaning of swatantrata in the real sense this is the meaning of freedom in the real sense so this does not mean that i do whatever i feel like you know and i am in isolation i am independent i am free to do whatever i feel like right what it means is that what is naturally acceptable to me i understand and i have those feelings which are naturally acceptable to me and i am able to live with those feelings which are naturally acceptable to me so i know what is my swatva that is what is naturally acceptable to me and i am able to live with that swatva with what is whatever is naturally acceptable to me that is the state of satantrata that is the state of freedom right <coughs> second is fraternity fraternity if you see means i identify myself in the relationship with others 
we are related, we are together. So ultimately, what would it mean? So we are saying fraternity in its ultimate would mean having the feeling of love. That is accepting everyone as related to him, treating everyone as one's relative. This is fraternity. Now, in the light of this too, when we look at the equality, we can see that equality will be a natural outcome of this feeling of love. So when I'm you know, accepting everybody as my relative, as related to me, I have this feeling of love. Then I will treat them equal. Right. And more than that, right. not only that I will treat them equal, I will give them better opportunity than myself. Mm. So a mother okay, who has this feeling of love for the child, not only gives equal opportunity to the child, but better you know, than herself. Mm. So if the child wets the bed in the night, the mother will keep the child on the dry side. Right? Okay. Yes. And sleep over the wet side herself. So this is more than equality. You are giving a higher preference to the other. That will be the outcome of this feeling of love. So this is essentially what, you know, uh, is the basic thing that we have to see. Understanding of relationship, acceptance of relationship, commitment for relationship. Truth, love and compassion is at the base. Then in the light of this, we can talk about all kinds of feelings that we are talking about. Hmm. What about negative feelings like anger, fear, anxiety, those kind of things? They have not been mentioned here. Yeah, we are talking about these feelings as naturally acceptable feelings. Right. If you look at these negative feelings, they are basically the absence of this naturally acceptable feeling. So as we go further, we will see this feeling of anger is basically an absence of feeling of trust. So when we talk about feeling of trust, we will see that this anger is because I do not have this feeling of trust on intention of the other. We will ask this question that if you have a feeling of trust on intention of the other, that is, if you are sure that the other wants you know, to be happy and make you happy. Right? Then if the other is doing something right, which is not ensuring this happiness for me, then I will ask this question whether it is a matter of his intention or a matter of his competence. And if I can see that he has this intention of making himself happy and making others happy, but he does not have the competence. If I can see this, then will I try to oppose him? Get irritated, get angry on him, or I will try to help him to develop his competence. I'll try to help. Yes. But if you are getting irritated, getting angry, or having feeling of opposition, it is only an indication that somewhere you have started the doubting, you know, his intention. So this is lack of trust. But this we will discuss, you know, discuss in detail when we are talking, going to talk about this feeling of trust. Okay. Yes. There are some people who seem to become happy when they see others that are unhappy. So how do we manage the relationship with such people? (laughs) 
See, <clears throat> I mean, I was taking this example of a mother, you know. When the mother is shouting at the child or beating the child, right, what is her situation? Is she comfortable within or uncomfortable within? Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable within. So this we have to understand. That these people who are, you know, trying to be happy by seeing others unhappy. If you look at these people, they have this feeling of jealousy, you know, with others. And with this unnatural feeling, they are in contradiction, in unhappiness within. Right. Now, what do we do? We need to help them, help them understand and see the relationship. Right. Then they will be able to accept the relationship. And with the feeling of affection, they will start thinking of making others happy. This is important. But they seem to get happy. How can we say that they are unhappy? No, find out if they really get happy. If they really get happy by seeing others unhappy. If you look at them, they are very restless, you know, very uncomfortable within. Mm. Yes. I mean, in our college, there used to be a person, you know, whom we, you know, he, he was called as N minus one. You know. And this N minus one means that anybody who is sitting with him, he will keep complaining about everybody else except this person sitting there, you know, that minus one is this. You know. <laughs> And when he goes away, somebody else comes, you know, he, this will, person will be also included you know, in this condemning. <laughs> now, this man, whole day is doing this, or most of the time he's trying to do this. Now, he feels happy about doing this. But if you look at this person, he's quite restless within, quite mm. unhappy, not getting sleep in night, you know all these kind of problems, anything that everybody is out to make him unhappy. And he's unhappy because everybody else, you know, bad people are there around. Mm. Yes. And therefore he keeps complaining about everybody. So you will think that he is getting happiness out of complaining, you know, about others. But the fact is that he is very uncomfortable within. Mm. If you are comfortable within, what will come out of you is that comfortableness, not uncomfortability. So what you are saying is that when we keep complaining about others, it's because we are unhappy. Yes. Hmm. If we are in harmony and happiness within, what do you think? We'll think of good for the other or bad for the other? Good. <laughs> good for the other. And even if there are some weaknesses, some problem in the other, we'll, whether we will try to improve upon that, the, upon that or complain over it. Mm, we'll try to improve them then. Yes. The problem is that you think that they, other people are given more respect and all that. And you are given less. So you are trying to prove that you are better than the other. <laughs> that you cannot prove. So you are proving that the other is worse than you. Mm. That is the idea. But if you look within that idea, this person is not happy within. You know? He is not feeling respected within. So he is looking for respect from you. And to get respect from you, to be happy, what he has to do is either he has to prove that he is higher, you know, better than the other person, or he has to prove that the other person is worse than him. And it's easier to show the other person as being worse. <laughs> yes. So in fact, when you listen to these people, you know, 
what they are saying, you know, maybe a lot of words and all that, but in a sense, what it means that I am better than them. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And this is very interesting, you know, we should all start looking at our own, you know, uh, way of expression. That are we also doing the same thing? So for me, it becomes very simple, you know, now that when the other person is saying so many things, you know, I'm able to extract this out, you know, that yes, ultimately he's trying to say that he is important. He is better than others. So when you say these people don't come in time, you know, what you are trying to say that I come in time mm. and therefore I'm better than these people. Mm. They don't take their work sincerely, seriously, and so on. Yeah. Yes. Is there any difference between feelings and emotions? If so, what is the difference? See, here we are using this word feeling in a very uh, particular uh, way. So what we are saying that feeling in relationship means feelings which are naturally acceptable to us. This is the way we are defining this feeling here, so that we have to keep in mind. That when we say feelings in relationship, we are saying feelings which are naturally acceptable to us in the relationship. When you say emotions, then it includes all kinds of feelings. Feelings which are naturally acceptable and feelings which are not naturally acceptable. Mm. So that is the difference. So emotion is also feeling. <laughs> but it includes both type of feeling, feelings which are naturally acceptable and feelings which are not naturally acceptable. Mm -hmm. So trust is also an emotion and anger is also an emotion. But what we are saying is that trust is a feeling in relationship because it is naturally acceptable in relationship. But anger is not a feeling in relationship because it is not naturally acceptable. That is the difference that we are making here, you know, in our kind of uh, holy scheme of this talking about relationship. Yeah. But this may not be consistently there everywhere, you know, in other systems. <coughs> this thing, here this word is defined in this manner, this feeling is defined as naturally acceptable feelings. Mm. I think we do use emotions a lot of times in a negative way and um, uh, can we say that sometimes, you know, when uh, say a negative feeling becomes so overwhelming for us that we, um, we are not able to control or it, it is overpowering us, that would be classified as an emotion? I would not say that from my side. I would say that, you know, both types of feeling, acceptable, naturally acceptable and not naturally acceptable. Okay. Will give rise to your emotion. And then we say mood, you know, somebody is in a bad mood or good mood. So that has to do with feeling or emotion or... See, when you say mood, which, you know, it would mean that whole imagination part of it. So when you have a wrong feeling or a feeling which is not naturally acceptable and then you are expanding your thought on it, your expectation on it, right? Mm. Then the whole imagination, you know, is in a bad shape right? or whatever is the shape that is called mood, I would say. Mm. 
So if you have a wrong feeling, it will be a wrong mood, bad mood. If it is a right feeling, then you will be in good mood. Mood. Yeah. So mood will include from my. I mean, that's I way I would look at it. You know, would include all this whole imagination which is based on this feeling, and not just the feeling. Hmm. So that example we were taking, you know, thinking of taking revenge from someone. So at the base, you have this feeling of opposition. Mm. You have that jealousy, and then you are expanding on it. So in that condition, you are in a bad mood. Mm. So if some comes, somebody comes in between and asks you something, you may shout because you are in a bad mood. And the bad reason for that bad mood is. That feeling of opposition, which is not naturally acceptable, so you are already in contradiction with it, unhappiness with it. So if somebody comes and you know interrupts you, you express your bad mood by shouting at him. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. But we are not really. We only see the mood part, and we are not aware of. The feeling and the thought behind it, and everything yes. else that has happened inside. True. Yeah. And if I can see that, you know, then I will try to handle this feeling, which you know, is, which has gone wrong. So I can see the mood of the other. I can also see my own mood, and I can see that the base of this is the feeling. And if my mood has gone bad, something has gone bad with the feeling to begin with. And I must set that right. Mm. In fact, if we understand these things, we will start getting solutions, you know, for our own problem. Mm. Supposing I am getting feelings, uh, these good feelings from. the people around me from my family members or you know whoever i am interacting with then if i am getting the good feeling from outside do i still need to worry about ensuring them within myself yeah if you can get that and you can manage with that there is no problem from outside all right so you can go ahead with it <laughs> but You check this whether you want continuity of these feelings or not, and yeah. whether you can ensure getting this feeling from the others in continuity or not. Mm. If not, then it is important that you have these feelings in yourself, right? Okay. Which mm. is based on right understanding of relationship. Right, mm. and if you have these feelings in yourself, which is based on right understanding, then you can ensure the continuity of these feelings in yourself, and that can be the source of continuous happiness for you. Right, mm -hmm. and it can also be help you know in ensuring mutual happiness. so for your own happiness in continuity you need to have these feelings in you based on your right understanding and for mutual fulfillment also you need that these feelings right, in yourself and this is what we are saying hmm. but if somebody wants to try it out you can try out you know <laughs> so essentially we are spending so much time and effort to get respect from others mm. we have been begging for respect and doing all kind of thing you know climbing up the mountain to get appreciation from others wearing all kind of dress you know, making big houses big car just to get respect and despite all that we are not able to ensure that continuity of respect from others mm. 
that is our problem yeah you were saying something i was just saying that uh, so ultimately if i want to be continuously happy then the responsibility is with me that i have to have that feeling within me yes mm. i have to have the right understanding within me understanding of relationship then i have to have that acceptance of relationship and the feeling in relationship this i have to ensure for myself if i ensure for myself this i can also be a help for the other so i when i share this feeling with the other right it leads to state of happiness within the other as well and further it creates that possibility that is space in the other to understand the relationship accept the relationship and so on there was something i wanted to kind of share that's uh, it's an event that is happening around me to with the known person and also wanted to get a perspective on it uh, there's uh, my wife's childhood friend's husband he is in the hospital for the last uh, 11 days just to give a brief background this gentleman actually uh, i've known him for a while uh, you know uh, they didn't have a child of their own and they adopted a girl child the child is 10 years old uh this fellow's age is about 47 approximately he had a mild heart attack and then he was in the hospital i i it looks like the hospital kind of bust up the case and he's uh he was put on ventilator and a couple of other support machines and just two days back you know the doctors basically the hospital authorities came and they said you know uh, they made the family sign all the papers of their removing the machines uh, kind of signaling you know maybe this is the end of road uh, at one level it's you also left me very disturbed uh the question that i had was you know uh, uh, the pain and the misery that uh, the whole immediate family is going I, and i'm praying against uh, this thing hoping for a miracle you know this this man kind of survives the pain and misery the immediate family is going is uh, is immense uh, uh, you know i've been around for about 3 months on these morning sessions but to be able to disconnect and see him as a body and not as a self uh, there is a, there is a self guilt which automatically comes of me being cold and me being feeling less also uh, i i see a certain severance of uh, you know fulfillment of relationship that will occur the moment the body is gone uh, you know it, it, it the whole fulfillment of mutual fulfillment of a relationship this body and self are so intricately uh, entangled that to see somebody as a self uh, becomes very difficult uh, even i am struggling for it the other was you know uh, when i look at the level of uh, virtues of act uh, and this is very intricately i think ingrained in our culture of reward and punishment of you know you do good and bad doesn't happen to you whereas uh, i think there are there are certain frailties that were there in his body he was a diabetic uh, he is a diabetic i would not say was but he is a diabetic and uh, i think that kind of compounded the issue so maybe he was not doing justice to his body but uh, a lot of elder people then equate you know isne itna bura to nahi kara that something bad should happen to him but i think uh, you know if your physical actions are not respecting your body and then to find a manifestation at the level of self that bad will not happen to you i think that whole thing also kind of doesn't fit well but this part i am kind of clear about but the other part of disassociating the self from the body is kind of tricky and difficult 
Ya, tu, tu. We are so identified with the body. Yeah, but uh, is, sorry. It is difficult for us to see that we are basically the self who are associating with the body by choice. So it is important for us to see for ourselves that first. Then it will be possible probably to see for the other also. Presently, we are quite identified with the body. <clears throat> quite identified with the body. I mean, the whole civilization is taking the human being as body, no trace of self. Now slowly we have started looking at the self, and we realize that yes, self is there, body is there, the coexistence is there. Now slowly we have to see that it is self. which is central to human existence. And this self is associating with the body by choice and it is conducting the body by choice. That we have to slowly understand for ourselves. And then we have to see that, yes, we can associate with the body or what we are saying, we are transacting this information with the body in terms of giving some instruction to the body and in terms of reading some sensation from the body. This is all by the choice of the self. And we can also see that most of the time we are not transacting information with the body. In fact, if we start carefully being aware of ourselves and being aware of this transaction between the self and the body, then you will see most of the time you are involved with your own self. You are not even aware of the body. Not even aware of the body. In fact, this you can see most, you know, you eating something of your favorite. And you eat the whole thing and, and you realize that, you know, you have not paid attention to the taste of the food that you are eating, which you consider was so tasty and so important for you. Because you are thinking of something else. Right? So you are busy, you are very busy with your imagination. And that during that period you did not even notice the taste of the food. <laughs> even you are, when you are driving, you know, if you're driving 20 kilometers, takes one hour, right? And you reach your destiny, and suddenly you realize that so much time has passed, you know, and most of the time you were unaware of it. You know, the body, the body sensation. You are giving minimum attention that is required for driving to take place. So let us work on that, then we'll be able to see that the other is also not really the body, but the self associated with the body. And this association is by choice. And even when I'm associated with the body, the transaction I'm making with the body is my choice. And it is very less percentage. So if you ask me order, it will be like 1% or less than 1% of my involvement of the with the body. 99% I'm involved with myself. Uh, but the question is, you know, uh, let's say, you know, if I'm able to see it like that, to see another person as a body and then to take a decision, you know, it's just the body going, will it not be devoid of the feelings that we are called, talking about trust, compassion and love? Or will it still be there? Like at this moment, I'm not there. So I am feeling, you know, there is, which is why the guilt is also coming. See, this is what I'm saying that if you look at it as a self, 
then you will have these feelings, whether the body is associated or not associated with that self. When it is associated with the body, you will do something for the body also. But when it is not associated with the body, you cannot do anything for the body because it is not there. But you will certainly have the right feelings for the self. But the interesting thing is that if we have understood this self and body and their coexistence, and now we understand the relationship, then we'll have this feeling of relationship for the self. And in the process, we will be able to do what we have to do for the self. And in the, as a part of it, if there is something necessary to do for the body, we'll do for the body also. Today, what is happening, even when the other self is associated with the body and is there, you know, with us, we are not really taking care of them. Not taking care of the self, not taking care of the body. Right. So at least we will be able to do it when we are there, you know, with this self associated with the body. I mean, very simple examples. Mothers, for example, you know, she wants to take care of the child. But invariably she overfeeds the child. And many times she feeds the child with by force. <laughs> now, I am trying to take care of the body, but I am I taking care of the self. Or I am making the self unhappy in the process of feeding the body. So that is what we are saying, that if we understand self, we understand the relationship better. And when we understand the relationship, the feelings in relationship, then we are able to express better. Then, if we assume that the human being is just the body and try to see relationship on the basis of body, So this is a crucial time where we can look into these things, you know, and study ourselves. Uh, sir, सभी को धन्यवाद देते हुए और अभी जो मैं ये सत्संग में हूँ तो मैं ये सत्संग में से क्या पा रहा हूँ ये सबसे important है तो मुझे ऐसे लगता है कि जो मेरी जो सुनने की जो आदत है ये बढ़ते जा रही है जैसे जैसे मैं सुन पा रहा हूँ मिस मिस आपसे और बाकी जैसे जैसे लोगों से सुनते सुनते जा रहा हूँ वैसे वैसे मेरा सेल्फ एक्सप्लोरेशन बढ़ते जा रहा है जैसे जैसे सेल्फ एक्सप्लोरेशन बढ़ते जा रहा है वैसे वैसे अंडरस्टैंडिंग लेवल में मुझे लगता है कि मैं आ, ये जो सेल्फ एक्सप्लोरेशन कर रहा हूँ वैसे वैसे अंडरस्टैंडिंग मेरी थोड़ी 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 थोड़ी, थोड़ी बढ़ते जा रही है नहीं ऐसा नहीं है लेकिन सर ये ये सब करते हुए कभी कभी मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ये जो अंडरस्टैंडिंग लेवल है ये सब में है नहीं ऐसा नहीं है लेकिन ये मैं की वजह से जो मैं का मेरा जो हम रहता है ये मैं के हम के वजह से कभी कभी हम कोई चीज समझ नहीं पाते तो मेरा प्रश्न ये उठता है कि ये मैं के हम को हम धीरे धीरे कम कैसे करें जी हम लोग इसी पर बात कर रहे हैं कि ये जो हमारे अंदर सही है ना कहीं ना कहीं पता है हमको उसको जो है सेंटर में ले आए 
उसको समझ ले क्या चीज है वो तो ये जो हमारा ईगो है अहंकार है वो अपने आप ही डिजॉल्व होने लगेगा ईगो का मतलब यह है कि ओवर इवेल्यूएशन कर रहे हैं राइट इवेल्यूएशन नहीं कर रहे राइट इवेल्यूएशन इसलिए नहीं कर पा रहे क्योंकि राइट क्या हमको पता नहीं है तो राइट क्या है उसको पता लगा लें और उसका रेफरेंस हमारे पास खुद ही है जैसा आपने बताया ठीक है ना तो जैसे ये प्रश्न हम पूछ सकते हैं अपने से कि भाई हमारे को क्या नेचुरली एक्सेप्टेबल है है ना रिलेशनशिप या डोमिनेशन तो पता चल जाएगा रिलेशनशिप इज नेचुरली एक्सेप्टेबल ये दिख जाए तो डोमिनेशन की जो जरूरत अभी हम माने हुए हैं उसको नहीं होगा हमारे में तो हमारा ईगो अपने आप डिजोल्व होने लगेगा कि नहीं तो सही का जो बेसिक रेफरेंस हमारे अंदर है उसको हम रेफर करना शुरू कर दें तो इसलिए दो बातें कही शुरू से कि पहले हमको यह समझना चाहिए पता चलना है कि क्या है हमारा नेचुरल एक्सेप्टेंस है और दूसरा जो नेचुरल एक्सेप्टेंस है उसी के साथ अपना जो है फीलिंग को एंश्योर करना है इतना कर लेंगे तो बीच में से जो ईगो जो है वो धीरे धीरे डिजोल्व होने लगेगा तो ये जो गाइडेंस है फ्रॉम नेचुरल एक्सेप्टेंस उसको हम नहीं ले रहे हैं इसलिए बीच में ईगो आ गया है जब वो नेचुरल एक्सेप्टेंस का गाइडेंस लेने लगेंगे तो धीरे धीरे डिजोल्व हो जाएगा ईगो सर इसी के साथ में ये जो हम जो कहते हैं कभी कभी आशीर्वाद की भी बहुत बड़ी जरूरत रहती है तो ये जो आशीर्वाद करके इसका एक्चुअली सेक्चुअल क्या मीनिंग हो सकता है सर आशीर्वाद का मतलब यह है कि सही बातों का प्रस्ताव रखा जाए आपके पास अच्छा कि नहीं आशीर्वाद का मतलब यही होता है कि सही बात आपको बता रहे हैं अच्छा ये आशीर्वाद का मतलब है तो जैसे अभी हम लोग सही का प्रस्ताव रख रहे हैं वन आफ्टर दी अदर है ना इससे आपको कुछ उपकार हो रहा है कि नहीं हो रहा है सर हंड्रेड परसेंट जी तो यही आशीर्वाद है वाद का मतलब होता है विचार तो ऐसा विचार जिससे कुछ सार्थकता निकले आशा निकले कुछ कुछ शुभ घटित हो ऐसा विचार रखना ये आशीर्वाद का मतलब है ठीक है ये हाँ सर हाँ सर धन्यवाद सर तो हम सबका जिम्मेदारी है कि हमको कुछ समझ में आया है तो दूसरे के सामने हम सही का प्रस्ताव रखें उसका ध्यान जाएगा वो अपने में जाँचेगा परखेगा सही पाएगा तो उसको जी के देखेगा पैसा जिएगा तो उसको समझ में आ जाएगी चीजें उसका उपकार हो जाएगा यस yes. uh, नमस्ते uh, राजुल जी आई हैव अ वन क्वेश्चन एंड वन रिफ्लेक्शन इफ इट टाइम डज नॉट परमिट आई जस्ट आस्क अ क्वेश्चन आई लाइक फुट फॉर माय रिफ्लेक्शन लेटर ऑन इज इट ओके या सर लाइक अभी तक लाइक वॉट वी हैव इन टॉट इज दैट इन रिलेशनशिप इज लाइक गिव एंड टेक नाउ वॉट आई फील इज दैट इट्स बिगेस्ट प्री कंडीशन विच आई एम हैविंग इज इट राइट 
Yeah, what is being taught today is take and take, not even give. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, today I understood the right meaning of like uh, what is relationship. It was like uh, I now I just realized that okay, that was the biggest uh, my precondition. We always used to take give and take, give and take. Yes. So there are three possibilities: take and take, give and take. Give and give. Right. So this, if you look at the relationship, then the economics will be based on relationship will be give and give. That is out of my feeling of relationship. I want to give to you, and you, out of your feeling of relationship, you want to give to me. So both of us want to give. Yes, so that is the economics.